You are watching the latest edition of the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, the use of spinal decompression to eliminate or greatly diminish pain. My first guest is a medical doctor who specializes in pain management and says this non-invasive procedure is getting great results with his patients. If you are in pain, my advice, stick around for the latest edition of the Wellness Hour. The Wellness Hour, an in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. Now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You are watching the latest edition of the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. My first guest is Dr. Bob O'Dell. Dr. O'Dell is board certified in pain management. He is here today to discuss spinal decompression to eliminate or greatly diminish pain. Dr. O'Dell, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Randy. Now, we've had you on the program before uh, as the local uh, pain expert. Now, you just got board certified. I did. Tell me about that. A lot to go through, I guess. Yeah, it took an eight-hour test in uh, New Orleans. It was quite an experience. Uh, when I, I passed my, my anesthesia boards in 1983, and uh, little did I know, at age 60, I'd be taking uh, uh, boards in pain medicine. But it was a good learning experience. I learned a lot. It's going to help my patients, and and uh, it's really a, was a good experience. Now, I was told that pain, uh, I, I guess pain management is fairly a new specialty, medical it, specialty. In fact, there's no really four-year tracks yet, like there is for internal medicine, for cardiology, for anesthesiology for surgical specialties and so forth. I think it's just a matter of time before pain medicine will become its own its own track. Some of these societies are working on that right now. It's a very, very interesting topic. It's a very, very hot issue because the, the reason people vi visit doctors is for pain. 80% of the visits are for pain. Arizona Back Institute, the leader in, in Arizona. Is that right? Is that fair to say? Well, in my opinion, it is. Well, you guys yes. are the busiest. You know, we're, we're not the Mayo Clinic, but we do some stuff that, that is not done anywhere else. We're cutting, cutting edge, edge stuff? Absolutely, absolutely. Cutting edge stuff, effective stuff, and safe stuff. Now, spinal decompression. Uh, and I told you on the telephone, I'm very skeptical about it. You say it works. Uh, before we get into that, talk about, because you say you're very aggressive with pain at the Institute. What, what are the different modalities or approaches you're using? To get well, rid of pain. We use uh, a very aggressive rehabilitation, the spinal decompression, both both for the back and the neck. In addition, I do interventional pain medicine with the injections. We also have uh, uh, we use a, a new electroanalgesia device, which we discussed on another show, okay. ca called a Synexus device, uh, which is very, very effective. And In what fact, is that again? Refresh it, our memories. What I, what I do is when I do my injections, I actually don't have to use steroids. Like I use epidurals? Yes. Okay. I use the electricity. And we have had uh, great success uh, in, in in our program and our, in our, using our protocol and getting people better. And this is again in conjunction with the decompression and with some of the other modalities. And, I, and, and not the least of which is the rehabilitation, which is okay. extremely important. Spinal decompression. A lot of questions about that on our website. And uh, so we had to get the expert on the, on the show and that's you. Uh, now right before coming on, you're, you were telling me a story about a dentist. You say, coming in for one thing and we, the decompression stopped it in its track. We had a dentist who, uh, uh, Left-handed dentist, like I am, okay. and uh, left-handed, and he came in, he could hardly work. He had neck pain, he had shoulder pain, and pain down his arm, I think, in the C5 distribution. And he was put on the DRX, which is a, a decompression device for the neck. VaxD now makes a, a decompression device for the neck. Uh, for a while, it was only for low back, but this DRX device that is in the clinic works on the neck. And after three or four treatments, his pain virtually was eliminated. We had scheduled him for an epidural injection along with the electroanalgesia. He's on the table and they said he wanted to talk to me and I said, how are you doing? He says, I don't need pain. I said, get out of here. You don't, you don't need an injection. He's so happy he wants to refer us 100 patients. Think about this. There's virtually no risk to the decompression. A little, there's a little bit of risk to the, to the injections and we take injections in the neck very, very seriously. Okay. Okay. But with virtually no risk, the, the fellow's completely better. And, he, and here's, a, here's a person whose livelihood depend, depends on the, uh, dependent on the decompression. So everybody with low back pain, neck pain, should at least try it, in your opinion, that's on drug therapy, or they're, you know, they're, they're the type of person that's going in for getting these epidurals all the time? Y yes, decompression has been slow to be accepted by the medical establishment, but I really believe in 10 to 15 years, it'll be a mandatory requirement before surgery. Now, I mean, I, I'm making a prediction, may not come true, but with all the money being spent and wasted, surgical outcomes are not that good. A third of the people get better, a third of the people get worse, and a third of people stay the same. And then, once they've been operated on, they have interference in how the low back or the neck works. When we move around, 
We don't okay. get paresthesias or electrical shocks in our system because all of our vertebrae are moving a little bit to compensate for that movement. It's called dynamic functional compensation. It's, it, it occurs at the spinal level with reflexes. It's very complicated reflexes that we'll never understand. Okay. Maybe someday they'll model that in a computer. But when a knife goes in there, even a minimally invasive surgical knife, it can mess that up. One other example of that, if somebody has a spinal fusion, within a year there is degeneration of the disc above and below. If, if the fusion above is above L4-5. There's generation of those discs because of because those discs are taking the brunt that is lost with the fusion. So spinal decompression. The beauty Where of it. Where does it play there? Well, there's, there's, there's two real benefits. First of all, it's safe. There's virtually no risk. But does it work? It certainly does. In my experience, personal experience, 80%. There's at least uh, four or five studies in the peer-reviewed literature that show a success rate approaching 70 to 80%. Now, you wanted to show me slides. You say that you're going to present to a bunch of medical doctors real soon. I have, yeah, and I have in the past multiple times. What did you want to show me, by the way? Well, this is one slide. There was a four-year follow-up study done by Dr. Dan Boudreau, an ex-ortho spine surgeon who started doing VAX-D. He when you say VAX-D, that's... The vertebral axial decompression. So that's decompression. One of okay. our devices, yes. What happened was uh, Dan followed his patients four years later. Prior to the treatment, only 30% of the people were working. Without any treatment, that would have gone down to about 7 or 8 or 9%. I don't know the exact figures, but it's of the order of single digit people not being able to work. Okay. With VAXD, four years later, 70% of people were either working or they were retired and did not have any low back pain. If it's as good as you say, why isn't everybody doing it? And I just, think I've asked you that before. Uh, it's just like anything else, it takes time for acceptance. One of the other things about the decompression, both cervical and, and, and lumbar, is that it treats every level. If there's something going on at one or two levels, or let's say somebody has degenerative disc disease, it works beautifully on older people. They just need this metabolic boost to heal these discs. Keep in mind that the discs are avascular. There's no, there's no blood vessels in there. So, and, and yet, that disc is as alive as my little finger. So it's not going to hurt them. It's not going to hurt somebody them. in their 70s. There's never 80s. Absolutely, works beautifully. If someone has osteoporosis and they have a DEXA scan score of less than uh, 2.5, then they are not a candidate. However, at our clinic, we have rehabilitation and many other options, including the electroanalgesia and my injections that can also possibly help them. And we've utilized those. How long has spinal decompression been around? Uh, it's been around. It was invented by uh, Dr. Alan Dyer. He was the Assistant Minister of Health in Canada in the early 90s. As you know, with their socialized system, they're having the same terrible problem with low back pain as we were, and they were trying to find a low-cost solution. So he experimented with this device and got a workable device and moved to the United States and started marketing it, I believe, in 1994, 95 here in this country. What type of pain patients are we talking about that, that, that are ideal candidates for the decompression? People with low back pain in general, almost everybody can very likely be helped by lumbar decompression. The reason for that is that 60 to 70 percent of low back pain is due to disc disease. And this device... Like bulging is, discs? Herniated discs? Exactly. It really doesn't make any difference. Now, if you looked at my MRI, I probably have bulging discs and, and maybe some herniations. I have no back pain. But we really don't know why. Uh, the MRI presentation versus the pain okay. that a patient has can be very different. That's one of the mysteries, and that's why we evaluate the patients very carefully and, and, and work them up and spend a whole uh, hour talking to them about the options open to them, not just looking at the MRI. Any patient who has back pain can be can be helped with this, as I said before. Uh, the patient who has sciatica, pain down the leg, the patient without sciatica. Uh, now, if somebody has just got back pain for like a week, then they should do the more conservative things for a while, obviously. But if you've had back pain for more than two or three months, it, it's certainly it's certainly worth uh, worth coming and what seeing. What about us. those people that have chronic pain? They're watching this. They've been in pain on and off for years, ten years, twenty years. How does well, VAXD working it, there? It, obviously, it's the earlier we get somebody, the better. Okay. Uh, when somebody has disc disease, a whole cascade of problems is set up, and there's a positive there's positive feedback. Unfortunately, that can make it worse. The discs start to degenerate, the muscle spasm, the 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 facets uh, the facets become uh, arthritic. But so the sooner we can get a patient, the better. But we've done VAXD, we've done decompression successfully on patients who've had this for years, and they've done very very successfully well. Successfully meaning what in your? Uh, that's a good question. Pain relief greater than greater than 80, 90 percent. Okay. Uh, maybe. Are you ever surprised? Not anymore. Patient? I'm, really? Not anymore. I'm not. We had a lady several years ago 
who had so much pain, she was in a wheelchair, she had so much pain that she was screaming when she was laid down to do the lumbar decompression. Okay. After 20 treatments, she walked out of there with no pain. Now, you know, that's pretty dramatic. and <laughs> doesn't happen that way for everybody, but it, it's, it's made a believer out of me because I've seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> the other thing is it's not just the anecdotes, it's the sheer numbers. The, the studies show, and my experience has been... So in the medical literature? 70, yeah, 70 to 80 percent of people get better. In fact, there's a new study that was done by, underwritten by Independence Blue Cross, done in Philadelphia by a friend of mine, which is going to come out in one of the major journals soon, where I believe they had a 90 percent success ratio. Now, I'm not sure what they define success as, but I know it was a substantial reduction in pain and a substantial functional improvement. Yeah, help me understand that scale, by the way, the pain scale. Well. We can't measure pain like we measure blood pressure. That's very difficult. Uh, there's no pain meter on our forehead. But what we do is ask patients to rate their pain from zero to 10. 10 being the worst pain you can imagine, zero being you know, the pain-free state. It turns out that the research has shown that for one individual, if there are seven and there, then there are three, somebody has figured out that their pain is about half. I'm, I'm not sure okay. how they did okay. that. But, but between people, it's very difficult, like my five and your five can be different. But in one individual, following that with a pain score, it can be fairly accurate. But can seven to a three be life changing? Sure can. I mean, the difference between not being able to work and being able oh, to work? Absolutely, absolutely. I've had patients who have reported that they're a seven down to a five and they think I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. Other patients are a seven down to a one and they're still grumbling because their pain isn't all gone. Remember, there's an effective emotional component to pain. When pain goes up to the brain, it divides. Laterally, this, the outside is, the, is the, uh, the system that measures exactly where the pain is. But immediately in the, what they call the paleothalamic system mm -hmm. is, is where, is, is, or the limbic system is where your reaction to pain occurs and everybody's reaction is a little different. But that's the beauty of the VAX-D is that, is that no matter what type of person it is, it seems to get everybody better. And the reason is, is because it's going to the heart. It's, it's, it's curing. I'm not supposed to say that. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's healing the disc. It's helping the body to heal itself. Okay, by pulling it apart. It, exactly, exactly. What, fluid goes to the area? This is an avascular structure. That's right. Okay. This is an avascular structure. There's no blood vessels. All it can do is get its, get its uh, nutrients, oxygen, water from the marrow. So with that vacuum that's created, as the, as the machine pulls, they go into the disc and they heal the disc. The disc actually, in the outer third of the annulus, the outside of the disc, are, are vessels. As people get disc disease, those vessels grow in. And that's why they get more pain. So okay. all of this is reversed. There's also an inflammatory cascade set up by, the, by, by the, the nucleus, which has some stuff in it that's just, it's called an algotic soup. That's the word used. That the, the, the nerves in the body just does not like. When that gets out and touches a nerve, that's when people get things like sciatica. It can just, I've, so how does this help that? How does that stop that? Very good question, Randy. When you're, when you're pulling on that disc, oxygen, nutrients, and water are going into the disc, and guess what's happening to the disc? It's healing. The body takes care of it. Okay. It heals itself. You know, we just provide the pull, and God does the rest. How is it different than traction? Tra I mean, help me understand that. Traction is a linear pull. Lumbar decompression. Meaning just letting gravity hang? Just, just you, you you, you pull the, it's, it's a constant pull. If the pull is, is 20 pounds, it's kept at 20 pounds. The, the lumbar decompression pulls according to how the body is pulling back. When you pull on the body, the muscles pull back. I see, okay. In order, in, in just simple linear traction, the muscles pulling back, you could probably see how that could increase the pressure on the discs. And that's not good. There have been some instances of disc damage reported from simple traction. What the lumbar decompression does is by relaxing, by, by this nonlinear pull, and what that means is as the pull gets greater, the rate of change of the pull decreases. It's, it's a complicated mathematical okay. expression. What happens is the muscles are fooled. The uh, paraspinous muscles, multifidus and erector spinae. So they relax and allow to pull they, apart more? They pull apart a little bit. One thing I also forgot to mention earlier is that this works at every level, probably up to about the thoracic seven and eight. So it really doesn't matter where your where your where your pain is or where your level is. And if it's degenerative disc disease at multiple levels, and of course these patients wouldn't be a, wouldn't be a candidate for surgery anyway, it helps every level. Okay. And it does okay. so safely. It's just remarkable. Now the person, and we're going to take a quick break. Somebody watching this, and they are still skeptical. They're saying, "Why didn't my doctor tell me about this?" Or they're self-diagnosing, saying, my, my pain is too serious. 
a lot of medical doctors still don't know about it. It's pretty remarkable. It's pretty remarkable. Um, I can't give an explanation for that. Um, I mean, when you take your pain management boards, which you just did, a lot of guys don't know about it there? No, well, there's nothing. Uh, I, I was at an International Spine Injection Society meeting in Baltimore uh, two weeks ago, and they were talking about these fancy disc procedures that, that the surgeons and the pain doctors do, the uh, minimally invasive surgery and the, okay. and the eye debt and things like that. Not one word was mentioned about vax I, I, I Do almost, you stand up and say I al something? I almost went up the microphone, but I didn't. It's, you believe in it that much? Oh, yeah. It almost sounds like you work for the company that makes the machine. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't. Uh, okay. uh, I have absolutely nothing to do with the uh, with the uh, uh, with the company, and uh, um, but you are definitely excited about it. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean the promise of it. Yeah, I, I, you know, if, if anybody in my family or uh, relatives, I tell them to find the nearest clinic if, if 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 there's indications. Remember, when the patients come in to see us at Arizona Back, we do a full evaluation. We look at their MRI or we get one. We talk to the patient about their symptoms. Uh, very, very often, I'll, I'll see them to see if any interventional techniques are, are, are needed. Uh, the answers are not always in the MRI. It's a full, complete evaluation okay. by the medical staff. Do you think that uh, physicians, uh, I guess everybody's guilty of this, maybe just reading x-rays or MRIs rather than listening to the patient? Yes. You can get, you can almost make the diagnosis from the history in many, many cases. So listening to the patient. Yeah. And by the way, I want to tell you, not, not to confuse uh, uh, the viewers, but you could actually have back pain coming from a disc and it can be a normal MRI that's called internal disc disruption and that means that there's something going on with the architecture of the disc, an annular tear for example, that can cause huge amounts of pain. Remember I said that those little nerves go, mm -hmm. grow in okay. and there'll be nothing on MRI and the doctor, your, your family doctor might say well there's nothing wrong with you. So the pain patient is accused of it's all in their head? Exactly. Okay. Exactly and that's not the case. And then back steer, this decompression works for that. Yes. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want you to take me through the process, what people can expect when they go there. And, and then I want to ask you about the neck. You're watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. It's all about pain today. What's new? We're here with Dr. Odell. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Bill Dorfman, the dentist from Extreme Makeover. I know a lot of people worry about taking care of bad breath. I'm a mint popper. I'm a rinser. I'm a gum chewer. That's why I recommend Breathorex, not only to my patients, but to everybody I know. Only Breathorex has Zytex, which eliminates bacteria, neutralizes odor, and it's alcohol-free. It's clinically proven to stop bad breath before it starts. It's dentist recommended. Get real fresh breath with Breathorex. Now get the breath freshening power of Zytex in Breathorex gum and mints. Works fast, keeps working for hours. It is now clear that not only are nutritional supplements vitally important to maintaining good health, but studies show that they can help reduce the risk of and successfully manage many diseases. I've done my homework, and the nutritional supplements I take, give to my family, and recommend to my patients are from Designs for Health. Designs for Health, the leader in professional brand nutritional supplements. You're watching The Wellness Center, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're here with board-certified pain management physician, Dr. Bob O'Dell. Um, a word about Arizona Back Institute. Um, you say it's comprehensive. And, okay, so you get them out of pain, and then you say you have, tell me what's next. Well, in a lot of pain management clinics, uh, my colleagues, uh, you know, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, and all they do is procedures. Uh, many of the patients that come to do decompression, both neck and low back, never even see me for injections. They don't have to because these work so well. Other patients, sometimes all they need is just rehabilitation. We have state-of-the-art uh, medics equipment for rehabilitation. Uh, Dr. Pruitt, the clinic owner, is a, is a, is a, is a chiropractic neurologist and is an expert in rehabilitation. And, and, uh, um, so you guys are big on rehabilitation there. Absolutely. It goes together. There, there was a study done uh, that appeared in the literature several years ago where they took patients who had new onset of back pain. Half of them were taking NSAIDs and muscle relaxants. The other half were put on this Medics Rehabilitation. What happened was after, I believe about a month, the pain in both groups was gone, okay? okay. They had previously done ultrasounds and the muscles of the people back pain, especially if it was unilateral, they could compare it to the other side, was 30% less in muscle mass. These are the little muscles in the back called the multifidus and the muscles a little bit lateral called the erector spiny. Now, in the next year, 94% of those patients who had the medical management only were re-injured. Why do you think? 
weak Be muscles. That's right. The, met, the medics had, the rehabilitation had restored the bulk of those muscles. Okay. And they were not at risk for any more injury. We just don't do lumbar. So okay, so I understand that story. The group that just took the muscle relaxers and let the body heal itself, they, they got injured. They, they still again. had atrophy. They still had atrophy. Right, because they got weak from doing that. Exactly. And the exactly. other ones that had a combination physical therapy. The rehabilitation, exactly. Yeah. And Interesting. It, when, we, when we finish with uh, lumbar decompression or cervical decompression, the patient has a full, uh, a full array of, of, of rehabilitation, including a uh, home program, home exercises that they're schooled okay. in. We have a physical therapist uh, and physical therapy assistants there full time. And uh, the, whole comprehensive, the whole comprehensive care is done. And really, that's what we need. That's what we need when somebody has something as complex. Would you say they're the best? I mean, yeah. you're a medical doctor. You say you've seen California practices where we film here, Air, uh, Las Vegas, Arizona. I mean, do you feel that you're the most comprehensive or the best, in I, your opinion? I really do. I mean, I mean, wholeheartedly you feel this way. Yeah, you could go to a fancy clinic and, and let's say you have an annular tear or something in your disc and they stick an eye dead or they stick something else in there to, to fix it. Well, it might work, but it might not. And it's invasive. The lumbar decompression is non-invasive. It, I mean, but does it work it. It, as well, stacked up against your injection patients as far as pain? Because I guess the only reason anyone wants to go to you is to get out of pain. Well, there's a randomized controlled study done in Australia published in uh, 2004 uh, in a, in a peer-reviewed journal indicated that uh, about 70 to 80 percent of patients compared to tens got better and the tens patients randomized controlled actually got worse. And the reason we th they thought is because the patients had to drive to the clinic, just like it was a rural clinic, just like just like the just like the uh, lumbar decompression patients, but they got worse. And 70 to 80 percent of the lumbar decompression patients got better. This is a randomized controlled study, which is the gold standard in medical literature. Okay, so low back pain, bulging discs, herniated discs. Yes. I mean, are are you? I mean, I mean, do you feel that everyone that has back pain that has not tried spinal decompression should do it. Uh, that's an excellent question. There's about four causes of back pain. Musculoskeletal, and we have fairly simple, re easy techniques to handle that, with rehabilitation, trigger points, etc. Disc disease, which we've talked about. Facet syndrome, which the VAXD can help, and if that, if that doesn't completely help, I can, that, that's what I do, is facet syndrome. And sacroiliac joint pain, which is a little bit lower down. And that really is not in the realm of VAXD. That is really not in the realm of lumbar decompression. But what we can do is we can ferret that out in the beginning. Sometimes the diagnosis of low back pain is very difficult because there's multiple factors. And what we do is, is let's say, for example, somebody has sacroiliac joint pain and lumbar pain due to disc disease. We do the, we do the uh, lumbar decompression. Let's say their pain goes from 8 to a 3, and then we'll go ahead and look at the sacroiliac joint and, uh, and fix that. That okay. happens all the time. A lo lo lot of people who have low back pain have it from multiple sources. But given that the greatest source of pain in the low back is disc pain, lumbar decompression is definitely the correct first step. I also want to add that okay. we, have, we have a DRX-9000 device in which the, pain is, the patient is actually on, on his uh, um, back for those patients that can't tolerate being on their stomach. Which is what the, uh, Does it hurt during the procedure or it feels good? Very often uh, in the beginning when the muscles are pulled for the first time, the patient might have some pain such as you would do if you went out and ran and you hadn't run before if you weren't okay. trained. But uh, usually that goes away in a few days and uh, the patients find it very comfortable. They wear loose fitting clothes. It's How soon do they get better? Sometimes people get better in four or five sessions. I've had patients that haven't got better until their 23rd. Usually we do 20 sessions, five days a week for four weeks. And if they're- So if in they're, one month, for the most part. Yes. And then what? Then they go, then they go on to rehabilitation, okay. which is, I, I can't over Is this something you want them to do forever, like every couple of years? It, it's funny you say that. Uh, some clinics around the country, for friends of mine, actually have patients come in once a month for a tune-up. Think about it. If you have degenerative disc disease, maybe you're, maybe you're my age or 70 or something, and those discs are degenerating because the aging factors and so forth. One pull once a month will restore that metabolic balance and keep them out of pain. So you like that? Yeah. Once now we don't do it that much at Arizona Back. Most of our patients don't 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 come back. They don't have to. But I can see that done in the future, kind of like going to the dentist for prophylaxis. Okay. It's a, it's a, it, it's worked very very well for some people. And think about it, the disc only gets its nutrition when you're in stage four sleep at night. That's when your blood pressure is like 85 over 50. 
the disc pressure is down to 25, muscles are all relaxed. That's, it's like the disc takes one big breath at night and then it's anaerobic, meaning no oxygen during the day. And the boost you get from this decompression device is and you can see the uh, the difference, and that's why people heal. Okay, what about neck? And we're almost completely out of time. Sure. What are you doing for the neck? Neck pain. The the DRX nine thousand is a is an extremely effective device. This is very interesting because um, it turns out the treatment of the neck is a little different. Depends on the angle. The disc architecture is a little bit different too. Uh, what the patient is 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 in a is in a is in a frame, and actually the adjustment is according to which disc is is causing uh, causing a difficulty to get the maximum pull at that angle, and it's been very very effective, and once again with virtually no risk. So people are really getting better. There's a, a another story I want to tell you. There was a patient who came in who was on the verge of suicide. He confidentially told uh, Dr. Pruitt that uh, this was his last hope. And he went on lumbar decompression, and, all his, and most of his pain, or all of his pain, went away. I mean, that's pretty dramatic. That's saving a life. Is that people? Uh, we change lives routinely through this treatment. Um, I've been fortunate enough never to have serious low back pain. I've had a little, little, little here and there for a day or two, and I know how debilitating it can be. But then it goes away. Uh, people who are in chronic pain, it, 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 it's probably it's it's quickly becoming one of the number one reason why people are seeking medical care, as I mentioned before. Okay. But what do and you say to the one watching this and they feel like they've heard it all, tried it all, maybe they haven't tried come, this, what do you say to them? Come and see us for two reasons. First of all, it's safe, and secondly, it's effective. And third of all, if, that, if lumbar decompression is not for you, for whatever reason, it, it maybe you have sacroiliac joint pain, we have wonderful alternatives, including electroanalgesia, the interventional pain medicine that I do, and the decompression. Do people need to get a referral from their primary uh, care physician to, to go to the institute? No, they don't. However, when they do come and see us, we would be absolutely delighted to uh, uh, send them all of our notes. We're, okay. We love to do that because we're really building up our referral base by doing that. It's it's really been nice. I mean, the story of this dentist who wants to refer us 100 people just warmed my heart. I mean, it's, it's one of the most fun non-procedures I ever did. You know, I said, get, get off this table. You don't need this injection. It was just great. It's the way it should be. Of all the injections nationwide, very popular procedure for back pain, right? Epidurals. Epidurals. Yeah. How many of those do you think could get off the epidurals if they use the uh, decompression? Uh, almost everybody. Epidurals really. What's your opinion? Uh, epidurals are only temporary. It's a chemical. It, with a steroid, it's a chemical. So anybody getting epidural should say, I'm going to try this. Uh, I, I believe so, yeah. I okay. very, very strongly believe so. Uh, just come and see us. You really have nothing to lose. All right. I want to thank you. Always a pleasure having you on the show. Great Thanks, energy Randy. here. Appreciate it. You've been watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this interview again online, visit our website at wellnesshour.com. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.